Hello everyone, my name is Flavor and welcome back to Bloody Chronicles New Cycle of Death. You can see what we're going to be doing on the screen today, Secret Operation, where we have two new characters, a baddie by the name of Uzar, and a new goodie to the fray, lovely green hair, by the name of Inaba... well we get to see in the game. Not 100% sure. Hello! Lovely little scene there. And Karu returns too, which is good. Briefing room. Hi, Misato. Let's me warn you before you enter into Bloody Chronicles DLC. You have to think on your feet, just like a real life detective. You must make split second life and death choices. So choose wisely and decide now. Thanks for the information. So I'm guessing there's going to be some QTE going on here. Quick time events. Come on, son. Today's a special day where we get to spend quality time with the rest of our family. So stop being so grumpy. Your father's right, Kazuki. We know you don't like crowded places, but this is different. It's our family. We haven't seen them for years. Are you, aren't you curious about how your relatives are doing? So this takes place during the start of your initial game. Besides, I'm sure Misiko would be really happy to see you. This is different. Who cares? I'm not close to any of them. Well, that's what happens. We don't keep in contact with them. <laughs> that's not good, Kazuki. You should socialize more. Or you'll never get a girlfriend. I'm curious to see what your future wife is like, son. Give me a break. <laughs> Are you sure it's safe taking this shortcut through the mountains, dear? It's getting dark. Don't worry. I know this road like the back of my hand. I've been down this path a lot through the years. I know, but it's snowing again. I'm worried that... Yuki, trust me. It's going to be just fine. Yeah, that's what we all say, and then the inevitable happens. Mizato. Ah, it's another nightmare. I look around for my phone. It's only 7.48 a.m., which means I don't have time don't have to get up yet. Oh, dear. Trust me. <laughs> I don't bother to get up. I just stay in bed, staring at the ceiling. Suddenly, my phone rings, breaking me out of my daze. I shall... Um... Yeah, I will... Save... There we go. I will pick up the phone. I'm not a rude po a rude boy. I'll pick up the phone and see that it's Akido calling me. You've got to be kidding me. Why is he calling me so early? I still have another hour left. I could have slept some more. Morning. I hope you slept well because we have a big day ahead of us. It's just another day on the job. Nothing special. Just another day on the job? Today's mission is requested by General Koya himself. It's going to be a blast. Trust me, buddy, you'll love it. It's a good thing Kara will be with us today. I doubt I'd be able to handle this special mission with just you as my partner. Hey, are you saying you don't believe in my awesome abilities? Whatever, I'm hanging up. I need to eat my breakfast. Right, breakfast is important. So, what time should I pick you up? Speaking of time... I've just lost an hour of sleep thanks to you. Seriously, man? This is precisely why you're always late to work. You're constantly itching to sleep more when you should be getting ready. But not today, pal. Commando Akido <laughs> okay, Ishikawa will not allow you to be late today. No siree. Not when I'm in charge. What? Since when did he become our commander? I will pick you up by 8.30am sharp. You have less than 30 minutes. Are you kidding? There we go. What the hell? He hung up on me. Oh, it's going to be another long day. What is it this time? Oh, it's a text, from, text message from Karu. Did Commander Ishikawa wake you up too? Oh dear. <laughs> uh, I see Karu has also got the Akido treatment there. Yeah, he sure is fired up today. It's going to be a long day for us. I get up and drag myself into the kitchen. I was just about to make my breakfast when I hear Akido yelling outside. Kazuki Koyama, I'm waiting. Damn it, he's here already? I guess it's too late to run away now. 
As I head down the stairs, I catch sight of my neighbors. They have all gathered on the sidewalk, trying to get a good look at a loud idiot. Not as well as DLC doesn't have any voice acting, but that's fine. It seems my buddy's grand arrival has gathered quite a crowd. Great. Just great. I see. Akido leaning against his car looking at his watch. I let out a heavy sigh and walk up to him. Not bad, Kuyama. You got here two minutes early. You. Huh? Don't complain and just get in the car. We have a schedule to keep. Am I being punished? When did I even agree to this? As Akida continues to blabber on about the importance of this mission on our way to HQ, I decided to use this time to take a nap to avoid losing my sanity. That's a good way of looking at it. Wake up, sleeping beauty, we have arrived. Give me five more minutes. Jeez, it's no wonder you're always late. I wonder if Karu is here yet. Huh, interesting. It's Karu who's late today, not me. I can't believe she's not here yet. Relax, there's no need to frat over a little tardiness. Now stop complaining and go make us some coffee, Commander Ishikawa. Wait, I'll give her a call and find out what's keeping her. And so the long, hard day it begins. A few minutes later, I hear a car door open and close nearby. It looks like Karu has finally arrived. Akido demands to know why she's late. You told us to meet here at 9, remember? So technically speaking, I'm not late. You guys are just early. And since I'm here, would you mind making me a cup of coffee? Are you nuts? We've got a job to do. We don't have time to drink coffee right now. A little coffee break is not going to hurt us, Akido. Listen, Suzumi forgot to tell you yesterday, but one of General Koya's subordinates will be joining us in this operation. Her name is Inaha Ashiba. Yay! Well then, that's the girl head. Or green head girl, sorry. Not girl head girl, what does that mean? Girl head green. <laughs> well then, that changes everything. Maybe I should make some, make more coffee. I'm sure our new assistant would love to have some. There he goes again, getting all weak over some young woman. She, she's hopeless. Yeah, it's just like Michiko when she arrived in the office. Akido just could not keep his thought process to himself. I follow Karu to the office waiting for Inaho Ashiba to arrive. Akido hurries off to make some coffee in the next room. Well, you look well, Kazuki. I guess you got plenty of sleep last night? I would have, if Akido didn't wake me up. He showed up at my place early in the morning and acted like a complete lunatic. So I had to leave so I wouldn't get yelled at by my neighbours. <laughs> Akido immediately shoots a retort my way. <laughs> I hear you. Stop complaining. <laughs> it must have been quite a scene. I'm sure Akido didn't sleep at all last night. I mean, just look at how excited he is about this mission. I bet he was up all night devising a plan for it. I wonder what's in store for us today. Do you have an idea what Michiko's request might be? Well, Suzumi told me yesterday... Uzawa, one of the top members of a Yakoto gang, had recently escaped from prison. It appears that he's got some help from someone outside the gang. However, the police have yet to find out who that is. The police just want to catch Uzawa before the media finds out. It looks like the police are having a hard time. Still, they should be focused on the bigger issue at hand, the Phantom. He's still at large and murdering people left and right. If this keeps up, eventually people will become too scared to go outside. We need to catch him if we want to avoid public mass hysteria. Are you still whining about how I woke you up? Sheesh, you should be grateful that I helped you, man. He's right, you should be grateful, Kazuki. Just then, we all hear a door open and we turn around. You guys are still here? Why are you all sipping on coffee, wasting time? Hey, what else can we do? Our guest hasn't shown up yet. Oh, right, I forgot about the guest. I wonder what Inara Ashaba is like. Maybe Suzumi would have some details about her. Should I ask her about Inaba? I will... Uh, well, we'll save first. We'll ask... Suzumi, do you know anything about the girl General Koya sent? Not much. She doesn't have any special achievement. Little is known about her, actually. But for some reason, General Koya decided she'd manage his task. Koya always likes to surprise us with his surprise decisions. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised myself that we'll be working together with Michiko on that case. I wonder what's hidden behind that. Does he know something more? Could you make a cup of coffee too, big bro? 
make me a guy. Oh, and one for me, please? What? Just do it, Commander. What am I, a, ba a barrister? Why do I have to be the one to make coffee? Well, you do make the best tasting coffee. Anyhow, why are you here, Susan Me? I thought you were working on some paperwork. I was. I just came by to pick up some documents that I accidentally left behind. And somebody walks in. Hello? Hello? Is this Equisor's office? Yes, it is. Please, come on in. I'm guessing you're General Coyle's subordinate. That's right. Aww. I'm from General Coyle's Special Police Force Unit, and I'm here to assist you guys. My name is Inaha. Inaha Isaba. Yes, our special guest has finally arrived. Welcome to Iguazo headquarters. My name is Akito Ishikawa, and I'll be your commander for today's mission. May I ask, what's your name, miss? It's Inaho Asuba. Please call me Inaho. That's a beautiful name. Goodness. Would you like some coffee or tea, Inaho? My colleagues say that I'm an expert at making coffee. Well, isn't he incredibly humble? I would love some coffee. Thank you. One hot cup of coffee coming right up. Akito dashes off to resume his coffee making duties. It's nice to meet you, Naho. I'm Aki Ishikawa and... You're Akito's younger sister, right? Um, yes, how do you know? Well, from your last name, obviously. I did a reading up on you guys too, since Igrisol member profiles are available in the police database. General Koya told me that I'll be working with you on this mission, so I figured I should do a little research beforehand. Inaho suddenly points at me. Kazuki Koyama, 21 years old. Both of your parents are deceased and you're currently living alone. Yes, you don't have to make it so... Um... <laughs> so straightforward. You dropped out of a police academy in your second year and immediately joined Igriso afterward. I smile worriedly back at her. She moves on to the next person in line. Karu. Karu Mui. That's enough, thank you. It's clear that you've done your research and we appreciate your efforts. However, we don't need you to spell out every single detail about our members. We already know each other. I'm curious to find out. What does the police know about me, though? Coffee is ready. Oh, thank you, Akido. You're welcome. Should we continue our conversation in the briefing room? We can sit down and enjoy our coffee while we talk. Good idea, Aki. Let's do that. Everyone starts heading towards the deep briefing room. Except me. I decided to sit back down and enjoy my coffee. Hmm. Akito's right. Sorry, Aki's right. Akido does make good coffee. I should ask him to make coffee more often. Do you not like our... Like our look, do you not like our special guests? Or do you want to just not want to join us? Hey, it's not mandatory, but I attend, right? Besides, I'd rather stay here and enjoy my coffee. Let me guess. You don't like our new guest. Susan places her hand on my shoulder, and with a hint of playfulness in her voice, adds, Don't worry, you're not the only one here who's bothered by her. What is that supposed to mean? Susan doesn't answer. She just flashes me with a smile and starts walking off towards the debriefing room. I quickly fish, finish my coffee before joining the others. Yes, he's a Nahu who dislikes other girls, it would seem. Quite nice, well, not actually, only nice towards Akido. <laughs> so you currently live with your family? That's right. For as long as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a police officer. I actually failed my police exam the first time. I had to wait another year in order to retake it. Huh. No wonder she has that grin on her face when she's talking about how I dropped out of school. Well, exams are just plain evil in my opinion. Even though I have trouble with exams. Which is why I'm surprised you managed to pass it the first time around. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> it looks like your boss doesn't have much faith in your abilities, Akido. <laughs> she sure doesn't. Hey, I'm far more capable than you all think. Don't forget that the police academy wanted me to join them after I graduated, but I chose to join Iguisil instead. Oh, come on, big bro. Everyone knows you joined Iguisil because of Susumi. <laughs> yeah, good grief. Well, of course, Susumi is the best after all. That's enough, Akido. Poor Akido. He failed to win Susumi's affections yet again. <laughs> You guys sure are an interesting team. 
I remember reading about how your team managed to locate and put an end to a bed of tomorrow's organization. Uh, she referring to the case we dealt with on my first day here at Iguacil. Yeah, if it wasn't for Kuski's help back then, who knows what could have happened. It's too bad the journalist left out some important details about the incident though. Then again, the media omits stuff from the news all the time. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. We're not doing this for fame. We're doing this because it's the right thing to do. I understand, so, um, if you don't mind me asking, what exactly happened that night? A lot happened, right, Akido? Yeah, a lot. Sorry, but we can't disclose any details about that case. It's classified information. Haha, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to pry. I'm just curious about you guys, that's all. I want to see how Igrisol operates as a team. Maybe it'll help me understand why General Koya decided to give you guys this case. Well, you're one of General Koya's subordinates, aren't you? Shouldn't you know why he chose us for the job? I can give you several reasons why he trusted us with this mission. First, we have been working for police for a long time. Second, we have never withheld inf any information from the police. And third, we have connections with the Moyama family, and you know how big their network is. Nothing gets by us, thanks to their help. Moyama family? She stares at Karu. Do you have something you'd like to say? In other words, Igrisil is funded entirely by the Moyama family? More or less. Okay, Aki. Let's get go. Let's go get those documents. I believe the rest of them have some work to do. Okay, good luck, everyone. And remember, don't do anything stupid, especially you, big bro. I know you're itching to show Naho how amazing of a detective you are, but remember that you're dealing with the Yakuza here, so be careful. Don't worry, sis. I've got it all planned out. I'm ready for everything. Anything. If you say so. Just get back here in one piece, okay? Will do. You guys be careful too. Don't worry, Aki. We'll be just fine. With Kasaki and Akido's help, we'll finish this mission in no time. Plus, Inaho will be with us. That's right, you can count on me. Azia is one of the top members of the gang, huh? I never looked through his documentation before. I wonder what the police have gathered on him. Be sure to update me on everything once you've done with the mission, and this mission must be completed today, so make every second count, you hear? Loud and clear, boss. Leave everything to me. I'll have Yazar back in prison in no time. I hope you do. Oh, and it was nice meeting you, by the way, Naho. It was nice meeting you, too. Who pokes me? Karo suddenly pokes me in the arm. Why are you so quiet? Did something happen back in the office? At the office? No, I'm just thinking about Uzawa, that's all. I'm trying to figure out what he looks like and where he could be hiding. I'm also curious as to how much information did Michiko share with Akido in regarding to this mission. Haha, <laughs> don't worry buddy, I'll tell you everything you need to know. And now that we had our coffee break, shall we get down to business? Hmm, there's a man on the screen there. Is that potentially Uzawa or one of the others? Akido turns on the projection screen and puts on the first slide. Yuzar is one of the top members of the Takashi clan, a clan that controls the entire west coast of Utna. They're notorious for their aggressive behavior and brutality. They're also engaged in numer numerous illegal activities such as drugs, protection money, and prostitution. Yuzar's most recent victim was none other than Peter Zanesti. We initially believed that Peter was one of the Phantom's victims, but we noticed that the murder methods didn't match up, so... We know all that. Akido... We, sorry, we all, we all know that Akido. Just skip to the main point. Kyle smiles and winks at me. <laughs> Seriously, he'll ramble on all day if someone doesn't stop him. But maybe Naho would like to know what happened next. That's very kind of you, Akido, but I've already read up on the case before coming here, so you could just skip to the main point. Okay, anyway, I've already asked for a copy of the CCTV from the night Yuza escaped. And it appears that there was a car parked outside of the prison gates that night. I guess that someone must have gotten it ready for him. So not only did he plan his own escape, but he also got someone to help him, which is interesting. It looks like the Takashi clan isn't just some ordinary gang. They are the real deal, and they mean trouble. According to the surveillance tape, Yuzar escaped from prison at precisely 1.23am. 
He then drove straight to Neko Plaza and parked the car there. He was last seen at the plaza. Wait, are you saying that he never left the parking lot? That's what it looks like. I double checked the tape. Every second of it, he's nowhere to be seen. Maybe he switched cars or something? It's unlikely. After Yuzar got to the plaza, the police arrived there shortly as well, but he was nowhere to be seen. No vehicle left in the parking lot. That's right. The police searched every car in that place and found nothing. But it's not just the parking lot, but the entire shopping mall. Hmm. Somewhere down below the road. So you think he's hiding somewhere in a plaza? Sewer systems. Yeah, but he may be only hiding there temporarily. It might be at night or even a couple of hours a day until he can move he can move again. So we don't have much time to act. It would be easier if they could just shut down the whole place. If they did, then everyone would know what's going on and there's something we are trying to avoid. Yeah, I know. We have to find him fast. Exactly. We can't afford to lose him. We have to take care of this incident today or else the media will find out about it. We don't want people to lose more faith in the police force. The media have already done enough damage as it is. Yeah, we've been getting our butts kicked by the media a lot lately. Ever since the Phantom appeared, everyone's been talking about how useless the police are. Public, do you realize that a Phantom is not no ordinary um, murderer? He's a possessed spirit. Don't worry, Naho. We'll catch you Zar for sure. The news media will never know that this happened. So what's the plan, Commander Shikawa? I'm glad you asked, Kairu. You guys should be honored I'm working with you on this mission because I've devised the perfect plan for this operation. Kairu shoots me a... What the heck is he babbling on, babbling on about? <laughs> Look, <laughs> I simply shrug back. Who knows what his perfect plan entails? But more importantly, why is he in charge of this operation? And do we really need to call him Commander Ishikawa? Okay, we will separate into two teams. Of course you will go with Naho. Uh, I will go with Naho and Kasuke, you go with Karu. Wait a second, why is Naho going with you? Well, because I need someone to pose as my girlfriend and she's the best job, best girl for the job. <laughs> you and Kasuke can pose as a couple too. Um, you two are perfectly a couple anyway, seeing you how you're always together. What? 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 Do you think I wouldn't notice? You idiot. We're always together because we work together. It's our job. We've been teaming up to work on the Phantom case as well. In short, it's all work related. We are not dating. <laughs> I don't mind working with Akido. I'm in. Whoa, see how well my plan is work see how well my plan is working so far. <laughs> Whatever. Just tell us what to do. We'll do a thorough search around the plaza. Inaho and I will take the west side, and you two can search the east side. Be on the lookout for anything suspicious, particularly for any hidden spots that could be used as a hideout. So he really believes Yuzar is hiding somewhere in the plaza. Well, I guess that would be a reasonable assumption, considering how Yuzar has never left the parking lot. Hmm. What if we run into Yuzar's men during our search? There are too many risks involved in this plan of yours. What if it backfires on us? This is why we're posing as normal teenagers on a date, so they won't suspect us. We shouldn't run into any problems. On a date? But I've never been on a date. Seriously? Well, I was, but it was a long time ago and it was a disaster. Well, it's easy. All you have to do is hold hands and walk together. You can even eat some ice cream while you search some random place. Be sure to check every nook and cranny of the place. Yes, but there's a big problem, Akido. Inaho is a, Inaho. Yeah, yeah. Inaho is dressed as a police officer. Regardless if you walk around as look, a couple or not, they're gonna know that she's a police officer. And we are detectives. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, just do it like this. <laughs> wow. Isn't that just grateful? She grabs hold of Akido's hand and affectionately sticks to his side. See, it's simple. Whoa. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. You sort of caught me by surprise. I, was expecting, I wasn't expecting you to grab my hand. <laughs> Sheesh, whatever. 
I've done my attention to Kyle, I could tell she's feeling a bit uneasy about the task at hand. Yeah. Not feeling comfortable with this, are you? What? No, I'm perfectly fine with it. It'll be a piece of cake. Yeah, just pretend we're on a date and search the place. Uh, Akita's brilliant plan is giving me a headache. Don't worry, Karu. It's going to be that as well. Do you mind if we use your car? I have a police car, and we can't use a police car now, can we? Absolutely. You can ask me for anything since we're a couple now. <laughs> Aw, you're so sweet. <laughs> Karu tugs at my sleeve. It's a good thing we're getting a little break from those two, huh? Yeah, definitely. They're a perfect match for each other. I had no idea now it would be so creepy. Maybe she just wants to make sure the operation succeeds, hence her willingness to do Akido's bidding. Then again, Akido is in charge of this mission, so she doesn't have much of a choice there. <laughs> True, he should be grateful to Michiko. She was the one who requested he put him in charge. Yeah, let's hope he doesn't mess it up. Oh, this is new. Hmm. Since our company car may arouse some suspicion for Yuzar's men, we decided to use Kaoru's car instead. Man, this plaza is huge. There are two floors, and both floors are packed with people. It's the perfect place for a prison escapee to hide. I wonder where we should start first. I sent a text message to Akido telling him that we've arrived, and are ready to begin our search. Whoa, there are so many shops. It's my first time here, actually. I guess you're not much of a shopper, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do shop occasionally. It's just that my shopping usually consists of some walking and a little window shopping. Akida and Susan are what I call avid shoppers. The last time I went with them, we ended up shopping for seven hours straight without any breaks. <laughs> I can imagine why you would feel ill about this situation. And also just realise we don't have our detective uniforms on, which is good. Well, that does sound that does sound insane. We're watching hordes of shoppers move from one store to the next. It is almost Christmas Eve, so I guess people are rushing to buy gifts. Kazaki? Oh, yeah, what's up? Um... Karu smiles shyly at me and holds out her hand. <laughs> I'm guessing she's not comfortable with this at all. Huh? I didn't expect her to offer me her hand first, especially since she has a total mental breakdown about this whole date scene earlier. <laughs> You're a strange girl, Karu. I grab hold of her hand and immediately notice how small and warm they are. I had no idea Karu's hands were this delicate. Come to think of it, this is the first time I've held her hand, isn't it? Is something wrong, Kazaki? You kind of spaced out for a moment. Oh, I'm fine. It's just that ugh, this is the first time I've held your hand and... Uh, <sighs> let's get to work. We need to focus on the mission. She starts walking towards the first door in sight while yoinking me along. <laughs> and so our date begins. Our date begins anew. A couple of hours have passed. We visited thousands of the stores looking for anything suspicious. Are you, aren't you hungry? Let's take a break and get something to eat. Good idea. Let's go there. I look to where she's pointing and see a tiny restaurant in the corner. Are you sure that's a restaurant? Yes, and it's perfectly safe too. Safe? Ah, oh, I guess she noticed the cameras too. I see your point. Let's go, I'm starving. Yay! We settled in our seats and order the first few dishes we see on the menu. We were so preoccupied with the operation and hungry to care about what we were ordering. This is harder than I expected. We've been here for hours and we've only managed to check out a few stores. I wonder how Akido and Yahara are doing. Who knows. I did send him a message when we arrived but he hasn't responded yet. I wonder what's keeping him. Maybe Inaho is keeping him busy with requests? Maybe. I just hope they're doing a better job than we are. Should we stay on this floor or check the second floor? I'm thinking that we should well, save first. That's the given thing to do. We're going to save first, and then I'm going to say let's stay on the first floor. Let's stay. There are still plenty of stores left for us to check. What I really want to do is leave this place. I've had enough of this plaza. It's way too crowded and loud. 
Akido's text. Still nothing on our side. I messaged him back, stating that it's the same for us. Is that a text message from Akido? Yeah, they haven't found anything. Let's hurry and finish searching this place. We can't afford to report back to Koya empty-handed. Wow, you must really want Akido to succeed. I had no idea you cared that much about his welfare. It's not that. General Koya entrusted us, well, trusted this mission to us, and I don't want us to fail. I want to show Koya that we aren't just some hopeless third-rate organization. I don't think he's that. If that were the case, he wouldn't ask us to, for helping find Yuzar in the first place, that's correct. Because if General Koya didn't have the amount of trust that he has within our organization, then he wouldn't appoint us for this task in the first instance. Maybe you're right. But who else he, could he have asked for help? Besides, it's hard to say what this guy thinks. It's funny that you're the one saying that. What does that supposed to mean? You know exactly what I mean. You never share your thoughts with us. This is different. How so? I just hate repeating myself, so I'll wait for more information before saying anything. I said, but Kara only gives me her... Yeah, sure, you look. <laughs> Besides, you guys seem to know exactly when I don't want to say something. Well, you always have this weird I know face. What do you mean weird I know face? <laughs> she winked at me and went up ahead. Jeez, wait for me! I reach out for her hand, expecting her to refuse my gesture or panic, but she takes it with ease. Lead the way, dear. Did she really call me dear? Gosh, why am I blushy? Jeez, Kasuki, get a hold of yourself. Hmm. We try to speed up our search, but to no avail. This place is just too big. Hey, Kasuki. What, did you notice something? No, um, I have, so I have something to ask you. Okay, what is it? Hmm, how do you usually spend your Christmas Eve? I usually just stay in bed. It's like any other day for me. Really, why do you ask? Oh, no reason. I'm just curious about how other people spend their Christmas Eves, that's all. Akido and Aki spend their Christmas Eve with the whole family. They'll even have a Christmas feast. For my father, work has always been his top priority in life. For he'd celebrate and spend Christmas with us when my mother was still alive. But since she, she passed away, he began to become disinterested. I kind of miss those old days, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I can't expect him to wake up one day and believe otherwise. I was about to answer, but then I noticed a man dressed in a black suit carrying a huge bag at his side. I don't know why, but there's something suspicious about him. I wonder what he has in there. It doesn't look like a typical bag of money. Karu. <laughs> don't mind me, I'm just rambling here, you can talk. No, check out the guy in the black suit standing next to the elevator. Huh? You mean the security guard? Yeah, doesn't he seem weird? I do not know. Maybe a little, but he's working in security and they usually look suspicious. Maybe, but there is still something that bothers me. What is it? Do you think he might be one of Yuzu's men? I don't know, but something doesn't seem right. Pushed by a hunch, I walked towards the bodyguard and stood next to the elevator he was standing by. Hey, wait! Kyro caught up with me. However, before we could enter the elevator, the door closed. Damn it! Where are you going now? Just wait here in case he comes back. I need to see where he's going. Cool. Nice date. <laughs> Glad to see Kyro keeps playing along with us. When I got to the second floor from a distance, I saw people entering the elevator. There was no sign of a security guard. Was he still inside? I thought heading to the elevator to find he wasn't there. Where'd he go? Excuse me, have you seen a security guard come out of this elevator? Asking the people who were around the elevator, every answer would be no. Nobody came out of the elevator. What? How is that possible? I took out my phone and called Karu. Hey Karu, did the security guard come back down? What? No, the elevator just got to the second floor. Something was off. The store only had two floors, so I'm pretty sure the elevator would go there before me. There could the elevator could have something that goes down rather than up, but he wasn't anywhere in that. Now I see how people entered the elevator, which means it must have arrived not so long ago, and the mystery man should be inside since Karu said it didn't go back. So where did he go? He could have just vanished inside the elevator, or could he? I did not know what to think about this, and then I returned back to Karu, telling her my theory. So you think there's some kind of secret passage in the elevator? It would be reasonable to think. I mean, maybe it made sense that there'd be, a, a, there'd be a floor only for staff. But how would you find it? 
Hmm, there must be something in the elevator that could help us. Hmm. We're inside the elevator trying to find out what we could, but we couldn't find anything. No secret door or hidden hatches. But it was just an ordinary elevator, except for one button that caught our attention. A, bu a label that was... It was a button that was labelled staff only. However, it didn't seem to be working because nothing happened when I pressed it. Maybe it's an emergency button to call a staff member for help, you know? Kyle was trying to guess what it could be, but I wasn't convinced. I found it strange that nothing happened when pressing the button. If that's the case, why does this button even exist? This isn't just a button, it does something. Maybe it's not just a button, but something more like some kind of reader. You mean like NFC? Yeah, it could be, right? Before she could say anything, the door to the elevator suddenly closed, and after a few seconds, we began going up. It looks like someone's called the elevator, so we put to pretend that we were going to the second floor. And when we did, to our surprise, we saw a security guard with an attractive young woman. I quickly wrapped my arm around Kyra in a tight embrace and shout, Oh honey, I forgot to go <laughs> to that sports store on the first floor. Uh, she almost blushed totally surprised by me, but thankfully she quickly realises my in intentions. <laughs> well, if you want to go there so much, we can go back. Thanks, babe, you're an angel. I called her in my arms and whispered into her ear. I'm sorry about that, but we need to see where he is going. Don't worry, I got it. The security guard said nothing and came inside the elevator. He pressed the first floor button, and I noticed ID in his back pocket. Should I try and take it? Oh, screw it. We can go there later. I shouted. As the doors closed, I simultaneously leaned forward, slightly pushed in the guard as I pressed the stop button and reached for his ID. What the hell do you think you're doing? The guard noticed what I was doing and grabbed my hand, reaching to his jacket. Karu! I didn't have to say more. She immediately kicked him in the knees so hard it almost lost balance. You little! He tries to pull out a weapon, but before he could, I hit him in the throat so hard that he lost his breath. And so the bodyguard stepping back grabbed his throat, trying to catch his breath. But then Kairo kicked him in the stomach, causing him to hit the elevator wall behind him. Giving him a second to catch whatever breath he could take in, I punched him in the face, knocking him out, blowing all the wind out of him again. The young girl started screaming horror, but then I reached into my pocket, showing her my ID. Calm down, we're detectives. This guy was wanted. The girl looked at me dumbfounded, and then Karu asked what she was doing here with him. And instead of answering the question, the girl moaned and didn't say anything. Are you a cool girl? The girl nodded. Hmm, this time we'll let you slide by, but don't tell anyone about this, you understand? The young girl nodded once more, and the elevator moved. Uh, as someone was calling it again I, since I've released the stop button. After the elevator stopped, we saw a few guys staring at us shocked. Sorry, but you'll have to use another elevator. This man fainted we were waiting for a doctor. Fortunately for us, no one declared that we were a doctor, and people seemed to have brought our lie. After the girl left the elevator, we put the security guard's ID onto the black button and we hear a quiet bleep before the door closes and the elevator starts moving again. Looks like you were right after all. Yeah, but doesn't it feel like we're going down? Yes, that's what I thought. If there's no room up, then there's always room down. Maybe we should tell Commander Isakawa about this, just to be safe. I mean, who knows where this might take us? I don't even want to imagine. What could possibly be waiting for us once the elevator stops? Okay, I'll give him a... There's no signal! It's probably because of the elevator. Um, we need to get out, we can't lose time. Yeah. That would seem the most plausible action. Yes, you're probably right. Hmm. The elevator stopped and the door opened slowly. A mysterious dark corridor appeared before our eyes. We don't know where it would lead, but one thing is certain. This wasn't an ordinary floor. This is definitely suspicious. Yes, if Yuzar was still hiding, he would be in a place like this. I agree, but what do you want to do with him? We can't just leave him like that. Hmm. I looked at the security guard that was lying on the floor. I think I know. I took his belt and tied his hands behind his back, and Carl helped me place his body down to block the elevator door. 
Now, the elevator won't be able to leave this floor for a while. That should do it. Let's go. I guess our little date is officially over. We moved carefully, but we didn't see anything or anyone nearby. It felt like we were in a maze. Who would have thought that there would be an underground level here? I wonder what it's supposed to actually be. Good question. I think we should call Akido now. As soon as she said those words, we hear a noise and we begin to hug the wall. Blank this place! I'm sick of this blank hole! We should leave already! It looked like the man was just around the corner. I could smell a cigarette smoke. It's close. I put my finger on my lips, letting Carl know to be quiet. And as it turned out, there was another security guard smoking and complaining about this place. It appeared as if he was all alone here. I took out a coin and threw it on the other side. Who's... Who's there? Who's there? Gotto? Matsudo? The man now in trees slowly and creepily glanced in the opposite direction. And while he was misdirected, I tipped him back of a thigh, causing him to shriek while falling to his knees. Bending backwards allowed me to put him in a headlock. What the bl- I tied to my grip on the man's neck and then Karu knocked him out. We should call the police, it's too risky. <laughs> no doubt they said that this was quick time. There's a lot of things to do. Um, let's go the risky route. When I began to drag the man's body into the core in the distance, I saw a soft light. It looks like someone else is here. Maybe it's Yuzar. I said, walking in the direction of the soft light. Hey, where do you think you're going? Are you crazy? I ignored her, not giving her an answer as I slowly snuck towards the direction of the dim light. And after passing a few turns, I realized it was coming from an open room. Someone was walking towards the room, from the other side of the room. Kara and I went back around the corridor, listening carefully to the steps. You are making a big mistake, Inaho. Just shut up. What is Akido Naho? But what were they doing here? And what was this about? Something doesn't feel right. Why? <laughs> Karu peeked around the corner. Damn it, that doesn't look good. What do you mean? Inaho has pointed a gun at Akido. What? What is going on here? Is she working for Yuzar? I don't know what to think about all this, but then Karu gives me a signal telling me we can move on. I guess she doesn't think it's a crazy idea anymore, or she is just con too concerned for Akido. Sheesh, Akido, what's happening? We stopped at the entrance to the room. Oh, so you brought me one of those little brats, huh? Just like you asked. Good, good. Now we need to lure the others in. Then you will help me to get out of here, you understand? What about my... She is fine. As long as you do what I say. She? What the hell is he talking about? You two will be standing by the elevators. You will properly greet them. What are you... Uh, shut up. I will take care of you in a sec. Use our plan to lure us down here and then, with Inaho help, quietly escape from there. They'd probably go to a different city. Not a bad idea, honestly. I don't think anybody would ever suspect a police officer to be transporting a wanted criminal. Sheesh. Just when I received a text message probably written by Inaho. What the hell was that? There was no going back now. We had to go in, even if it wasn't the smartest idea. We are unarmed. We both shout and raise our hands in the air so Yuzar can see them. I knew you were hiding somewhere, little rats. I don't know how you managed to get here, but apparently I was smarter. Now. He came close to Karu. Moriyama Karu, it's an honor to welcome you here. You begin, oh dear. It's been a while since I had some, f okay. Take those hands away from me, you. <laughs> From that moment, you have to do all my commands, you blank. Don't you even dare to touch her! What? <laughs> what makes you think I'm going to listen to you morons, huh? This entire plaza is under my control, buddy. You will die first, pretty boy. And afterwards, I'll have a little fun with your cute little partner here. Ugh! Kazuki, no, Kazuki! Did you two really think you could just prance in here and drag me back to prison? Well then, those were the incorrect choices to make. It's a good thing that we saved beforehand. 
Oh dear. It seems we've got a bad ending off the first time around. So, we'll go back into this, folks, and make some other choice. But for now, for now folks, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see each other in the next time of Bloody Chronicles Act 1 Secret Operation. Have a wonderful day, and take care of yourselves. Yeah, thank you. We will return another day.